it's going to stay that way pretty much and the only reason I bought a television Glenn because the noise from that plasma was between 3870 and 3890 I swear to God and it was a little bit down at like 3820 and then a little bit below that but the majority of it was right in the AM window so I was between a rock and a hard place man but like you said grow lights I heard grow lights are brutal I don't, I don't know what they look like on a pan adapter or sound like on a receiver uh, but I heard they're brutal. I heard solar panel technology, however, has come, I guess, made strides to where they're, excuse me, where they're not as loud as they once were <clears throat> as far as, you know, RFI goes. But, um, man, I tell you what, I, I, I always heard bad things about solar panels. And I know that <clears throat> when I move, I'm <laughs> just because of all the things that I've heard, I'm not going to move near somebody who has solar panels just because of the things that I've heard and the inverters and and all that stuff. So I wonder if you do hear anything from those solar panels that we're like 100% sure that you know uh, that that they're uh, that the RFI would be coming from those, man. Cause I could have heard, like I said, horror stories about those, Glenn. We got 43 degrees here, chilly this morning, man. I got the little space heater on out here in the shack, Glenn. And uh, 43 degrees, not, not not much else really to report. Like I said, might go over to my dad's today and go mess around with him, bug him for a while. I haven't seen him in about a month or so, so it's about time I get over there. N1SNG. Oh, yeah, and he's got a uh, HP, I think, 8640 um, <clears throat> signal generator for me, too. He just bought a new Siglent signal generator, so he's giving me his old one. Hand-me-downs. I love hand-me-downs, Glenn. M1SNG. <laughs> W3MMR, who loves hand-me-downs. Good morning. Who's that, Charlie? Yeah, that sounds like, uh, sound like Charlie in the N1XZW. <clears throat> Hang in there, Charlie. Yeah, I remember your dad uh, picking up uh, different uh, types of equipment. Uh, constantly upgrading technology. And uh, that's pretty cool. He uh, always has a pretty good success rate with that. And, uh, you know, with the FT-101 and the uh, Vietnam and, and so on. I think uh, uh, amplifiers and stuff there. It seems like he's uh, never really uh, heard his station, like, go off the air. Or <clears throat> there was some sort of, a, uh, you know, a problem with his equipment. So, yeah. He does a great job, and that, that signal generator want to come in real handy. That's for sure. And uh, yeah, as far as the uh, fact of the interference, um, you know, if, if you're going to move somewhere, get a drone and uh, do a drone uh, a flyover and uh, see what you got. You know, and around here, I'm on uh, kind of a dead end street here, but uh, you know, you go out a quarter mile. 360 degrees around, and uh, you know I've got the high tension lines. They just put in a big major substation about a mile away, um, plus the uh, the old Quonset Point Naval Air Base. Um, they've got a solar farm down there, which is probably I don't know, maybe uh, maybe 10 acres or so. So uh, you know what's behind the bush. How it's going to affect uh, your, your equipment, and uh, also foliage absorption. You know, when the leaves fall off the trees, you know, uh, sometimes uh, the leaves uh, act as a shielding, uh, whatever. And uh, as far as my neighbor goes, I, when they put the installation in, I said, "Oh, here we go," and he's only about 200 feet from me, and I haven't heard anything out of there. This is just recently. So I'm thinking it's a grow light. I'm looking at my neighbor's, uh, she has one of these uh, uh, spotlights over her driveway, so when she pulls in, you know, they come on automatically and all that. I don't see any problems there. But uh, this whole neighborhood smells like pot on Saturday afternoon, so it's probably, uh, you know, a good uh, percentage of people that grow in their own, but they're just, uh, you know, out doing their thing. And, uh, yeah, 41 degrees here this morning. Um, yeah, as far as, you know, I got an RP-98 here, so, I mean, it's got old school, 
I don't quite think that was his point. Uh, I believe his point was more so about grow lights, but okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's interesting because when I go to uh, 160 meters, uh, you know, I go to the 160 meter antenna, okay, it's right on like 1885 and 1945. Either side of that, it just disperses. I go to 3885 or, uh, you know, 3880, up and down a few. Uh, it's See the dead nuts in the middle, or just a little bit to each side, and anything beyond that, it's like it's uh, it's uh somehow. Anyway, uh, you know, you do what you gotta do. I think it's not gonna get any better, but yeah, choosing a location, uh, critical. You know, even radio stations, uh, for guys, you know, yeah, three miles down the road, there's a radio station, and uh, so on and so on. I you know Chris had some issues, AJ was. Yeah, it's a whole bucket full of, uh, uh, you know, things you can do. But, uh, it's, you know, as I mentioned, uh, the plasma TVs, I heard they're horrific. If you go to the ARRL site and you look up for uh, RFI interference and all that, they'll give you, uh, they'll pull you to a page uh, where you can actually listen to uh, a plasma TV, what it sounds like, uh, if you interference. So they have set that up. Anyway, let's see if Charlie's, uh, well, I think that was Charlie checking in, or maybe uh, some of the stations uh, yeah, down south. So, uh, N1XCW, Charlie, uh, was that you checking in, or what? King Mike, 4X-Ray Golf. Good. Hi, I heard you, Gary and Jim. Good morning, Gary. Good morning, Glenn. Snowing there, Glenn. It's a little chilly outside this morning. I couldn't go sit with the raccoons. I just fed them from the door. <laughs> go ahead, uh, pass it up to Jim and uh, Lewis. Yeah, go up. Uh, go ahead, Jim. Pick it up. We'll go. Uh, Glenn, Charlie, Jim, and Jim. You'll send it to Gary in Florida. Or Gary, Mr. Don't Kiss Alligators down there. WD4NKA, you'll send it to Jim. And then, Gary, you send it to me. W3MMR. Down to you, Jimbo. Good morning. Yes, good morning, Perry and uh, Charlie. Beautiful signal here this morning. And uh, good morning to everyone else on Frequency. Uh, pleasure to uh, be here and to hear everybody on on the net. I'm just kind of uh, having another sleepless night here. That's the only reason I'm up at this ungodly hour. <laughs> but uh, it's a pleasure to hear everyone. And let me pass it quickly then to uh, WB4NKA uh, down in Florida. Uh, take it away. Here's Cam 4 And I'm wearing women's lingerie. Go ahead, Gary. WD4 and K in the group W3 MMR. It's loud, man. It is getting loud. I got the lightning maps folded up. It's uh, out in the Midwest. And then we have our fan club in the background. They're a little piss weaker in there. 
I can't. I was trying to say something. I heard him say something about cross dressing and that he likes uh, sleeping in his mom's basement. Did hear that. Um, but it's kind of hard to to get all that in there when you got audio that's only about a killer her wide on AM. So if you're going to QRM, number one, get a signal, and B, get a transmitter that can put out some audio so we can understand what the QRM is saying. And <laughs> that's the only fun part about it. Anyway. Glenn, you had mentioned grow lights, and that made me think back to when I was buying ferrite about two years ago. And um, there's a company where I bought my ferrite. They make ferrite kits, and it's actually good ferrite, you know, mix 31 or whatever mix uh, permeability uh, ferrite you need. But they sell kits, and they sell kits for, like, just regular home RFI, like I got for my station. Various different sizes of clip-on chokes, uh, donuts, ferrite donuts, all that stuff. Then they sell grow light kits for people who have grow lights. So your neighbor has a grow light or something, and uh, you're like – and you can go over there with this kit and suppress the noise from their inverters and all that stuff. They have all these kits. They're not cheap, but um, they do make them, and I thought that was pretty cool how, how they – how they were willing to put that together so like a neighbor can go to someone who has something has a setup and be like look you know i there's choices out there you know blah 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 blah. you can do this 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 and so that's pretty cool man because i had to approach my neighbors with pamphlets you know like here's this you know five foot seven dude with a big beard and tattooed from head to toe knocking on their door saying their house is causing interference to my to my radio station they look at me like i'm nuts <laughs> You know what I mean? So you got to, like, be as prepared as possible for these, you know, to not upset anybody, you know, to have, like, all the information that they need so they understand what's going on. So it's not just, like, not uh, anymore anyway. I don't know how it used to be, but it's not just knock on the door and be like, hey, can I uh, can I uh, come in and put some ferrite on some stuff, please? I guess the world's a little different now in 2021 than what it was in 2010, for Christ's sakes, you know, so... That's the story on that, but it took a lot of begging for for that this this neighbor to uh, to uh, cooperate with me. That's for sure. So hopefully nobody has to go through that or buy any of them kits. I just figured I'd mention that, Glenn. And that's smart about doing a drone flyover. I never thought about that. I don't have a drone, but that would be really good. I, of course, I thought you know I'll pull up with an HF rig, shortwave radio, make sure it's electrically quiet on thirty eight eighty five. You know, <laughs> but um. You know, besides that, I, I didn't think of anything else I could do, but that, that, that's a good idea, Glenn. But heck, if you move out into the middle of nowhere, you can't see the next house. You don't need a drone. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. You know, I'm hoping to move out into the country, man, so it's nice and electrically quiet. But until then, we're still here. Uh, what else we got? And real quick, another mention about the uh, the RFI. I mean, it's all like it's almost impossible now. If you live in the city where you Glenn, or in the suburbs, Glenn, in a city like I do, uh, you'll be fighting until the house come home. You know, you really will. But you had mentioned, Glenn, real quick about my dad and how he, you never hear him off the air because he's like so meticulous about, you know, not messing with his antennas, his coax, his things like that. And uh, I guess we really make sure he do, doesn't write the first time so, like, none of that stuff breaks down. <laughs> he always has an extra, you know, so he can get on uh, in case he breaks something, which has been uh, – because my dad likes to talk. You know that, man. He's a talker. He likes getting on every band, every mode he can get on during the day. So uh, <laughs> there's not a ham – a working ham radio far away, whether it's a rubber ducky or hooked up to a rubber ducky or hooked up to a 160-meter dipole. <laughs> All right, well, keep it moving. Up to you, Glenn. Good group in here this morning. Wish Gary could have stuck around, but um, it is a little loud. But we do have a good group in here. Good morning to Jim and Charlie. N1SNG, back up to you, Glenn. This is W3MMR on the SDR. Too many microphones in front of me here. <clears throat> yeah, okay, Perry. Hold on just a second. Yeah, this antenna, I've got three antennas here, got a, you know, 75 meter, 80 meter, and uh, inverted V, 60 meter, inverted V, and then 160 meter, inverted V. And uh, they've been up there for 20 years. And uh, use number 12 
a wire, Home Depot wire on it. Built my own uh, insulators, drain reliefs. Everything's on a pulley system. The antenna's kind of hangs. It's not pulled tight. I don't believe that stuff. Uh, yeah, that would work yet because of the, uh, the windage and all. But uh, yeah, it works good. And uh, hey, maybe tomorrow it could all fall down, but uh, it does a great job. Uh, you know, for my needs here. And as far as yeah, your dad uh, jumping around different bands and frequencies and all, I uh, if, if I was to do that here, I, I look like the guy in the Wizard of Oz. Remember I find behind the curtain where the dog pulled the curtain away, and there's a guy with all the handles and cranks and everything, and the steam coming out. That's what's, that, that's me trying to well, you know, get all the tunings back to where they were. And, uh, you know, I got shocks all over the place. <laughs> well, maybe uh, something like the submarine. But anyway, you're bl bombing again. Yeah, that's beautiful signal. Gary, N D N N D four N K no at W four N K A with this alligator system. He was coming in here pretty good. His audio, uh, the armor piercing audio. I had no trouble copying every word that he said. He was he's a bright at the uh, right at the voice level. But he just cut through whatever he was doing there. Uh, I was doing a pretty good job. Charlie's uh, a nice drone system. Yeah, a lot of realtors use those uh, drones now. And uh, especially on waterfront property, where you can smell the ponds, lakes, and things like that. But uh, it gives you a pretty good idea. Uh, you, you don't want to have like a bus company or something, uh, two block style. You know, they start up all the buses in the morning and then you just shroud it with diesel fumes. That's the way I look at it. When I, we bought this place, I did the same thing. And uh, the, only, the only thing I saw was the, uh, the uh, C-130s, the National Guard, taking off the course of going, and the, uh, uh, the railroad, Northeast Corridor. They, you know, they go by and they blow the whale horns and whistles and stuff. I think, I think, I think it's kind of cool, but uh, other than that, yeah, we're pretty lucky. But I got a golf course in the back of me. But yeah, you know, you never know. Uh, my neighbor had a uh, something going on under his shed. Because uh, in, in the house here, I was getting a click, 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 click from the uh, RP-98. And I couldn't figure it out. So I went around the yard. You could actually hear it. So something he, he had set up was actually arcing. Uh, you know, so I this local stuff by. But yeah, I'm not going to go knocking on doors. And, uh, you know, uh, especially nowadays. <coughs> With all the stuff that's going on, but uh, it's kind of like Halloween. So anyway, yeah, I went to a yacht sale yesterday. Picked up a nice uh, Makita multi-tool, uh, brand new in the box, forty bucks, and uh, it's perfect because I got to take an old uh, broken soap dish off the, uh, the tile wall in the bathroom. So that came in handy. This poor dude, man, uh, he's getting divorced. And he had, his, he just redid his house. He built a uh, garage farm, like studio in the backyard. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, you know, I, I said, man, I'm really sorry, you know. I see you got a lot of your handiwork, and yeah, you did most of it, you know. But, uh, hey, some people just fall on hard times, and cards fall the way they do, I guess. But, uh, hey, yeah, other than that, uh, let me get it over to Charlie. I don't know if there was another station in there. I got a K4XG or something. But, uh, I'm going to send it up to Charlie. That's, uh, uh as far as I know, I can use a person line there. If there is a line. But, uh, anyway, if I have station, I'm going to chime in again. I did not get the call, so, uh, this time I'll send it over to Charlie. And Charlie's uh, inside this morning. It's too cold uh, to go out and feed the raccoons there. N1XCW in the group. N1SNG. Over, over. You in there, Charlie? Exactly. 
Yeah, real good. Uh, goes down to Jim. Pick it up, Jim. Send it back to me. Roger, Dodger, fine business, old man. I certainly will. And you sound big down here. Quite large indeed. A really good signal. And uh, good morning to uh, Glenn in Rhode Island. I think this is the first time we've uh, worked. Uh, I don't know if you're hearing me break. Yeah, good morning, Jim. Yeah, you're good 20 over. Beautiful signal, very nice audio. Uh, yeah, we're located in North Kingstown, Rhode Island. Nice to meet you this morning. Back to you. Well, okay, real good. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I was being heard all the way up there, but uh, yeah, you're doing fine down here, too. Nice signal, I don't know. Pleasure to meet you this morning. I'm looking at your, the stuff in your shack, and uh, I'm intrigued by this picture. You've got a receiver here that's a battleship gray with some uh, handles on it to assist getting it in and out of a rack, it looks like. And uh, when it gets brought back around to you, I'm curious about that. That looks a lot like a receiver I had when I was uh, a kid. I got from uh, my Civil Air Patrol squadron. was getting rid of it, and I said, I'll take it, I'll take it. <laughs> Uh, and it has a, a power supply just about as big as the radio, probably. Um, I'm wondering if it's the same rig. Anyway, a nice-looking shack. All kinds of cool stuff there, man. That's really great. Nice to meet you. And, uh, Charlie, man, I mean, uh, yeah, Charlie, you got a great signal out here this morning. You know, that's two mornings uh, that we've worked. I've heard you in the morning when you're just booming in down here in Virginia, doing a great job. And, um... Perry, what can I say? How about those Astros, man? Good guy. Uh, you know, I didn't expect them. I was really thinking Boston was going to pull it out, but uh, I, I got a question for you, Perry. Now, I haven't been watching baseball this year. You know, that's only the second game I've ever watched. I've never seen that pitcher, um, oh, Garcia, Luis Garcia. Okay, well, you know, I mean, he did a great job. But tell me why his move is not a balk. Okay, uh, the first time I saw him pitch, I thought for sure the, the umpire was going to call a balk. But no, he got out there time after time after time, and I swear, Perry, that's a balk move. <laughs> and I, I don't know if that's already been adjudicated in the sports world. Maybe this controversy occurred when he uh, first started uh, in the league, and they figured out that for some reason it's not a balk. I don't know. Well, you can explain it to me. You tell me if I'm wrong. But uh, other than that, uh, what a game. <laughs> what a game. And it was really, really, really something. So, uh, yeah, with a, uh, I guess, uh, it, let's see, uh, Gary in Florida, uh, I don't know if you were checking out and uh, signed out and all, but let me pass it down to you. Well, no, no, it goes to Perry next. I'm sorry. Uh, W3MMR, KM4XG. Yeah, Gary, uh, Gary said he's gonna take a standby, I think, because of the noise for a little bit. And I, uh, hold on, let me unkey for one second. I got, of course, uh, we're talking about noise this morning, and I have a noise I've never seen before, or heard before. It's from 3885 to 3895 now, so. Uh, you, you jinxed me, Glenn. <laughs> oh, man, gotta love it, man. And we still have our friend in the background trying his best. And if he doesn't believe me that he's not getting three, you can check out the recording on YouTube later and see how much your effort you're wasting, dude. <laughs> you can't even hear your carrier. Uh, you can see it, but you can't hear it. <laughs> anyway, um, all right. Uh, so many notes, so many notes, so many notes. Glenn, about your antenna then with the number 12 wire, isn't that heavy? I always thought that, like, number 12 THNN would be too heavy. Um... I'm using 16-gauge 16, 16 THNN. That's what came... It's on this uh, W7FG uh, antenna that I bought online with the 600-ohm, you know, open-wire feeder. And each each leg of the... Each side of the antenna is all one solid piece. Goes up through the center conductor or the center uh, insulator and wraps around a few times. It's like a... I don't know, a half inch piece of, or a three quarter inch piece of PVC for the center insulator. And it goes up, wraps around each side a few times, and then back, you know, to one corner and to the other corner of the yard. 
and um, I, it's 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 held up in some pretty nasty crap, man. Uh, in the tr being pulled through the trees, the ladder line got caught in the trees, and I had to yank it down. And like, if I could have broke it by now, I think I would have broke it. But um, when I first, before I first put this antenna up, I wanted to use for to build my own ladder line and feed line and antenna and use 14 gauge. But then, uh, you know, after doing some research, I, I, I figured I'd try the 16 gauge. I don't run stupid amounts of power. I don't run legal limit. You know. I run right at legal limits sometimes, you know, but uh, it's it handles what I can throw at it, you know what I mean? Maybe, you know, one day <laughs> if I get a broadcast transmitter or something, I'll need to upgrade, but I don't think so because it's all about the voltage. It's all about the match, you know what I mean, um, of what's on the antenna. You can put a, a million watts into something. I mean, it's got zero, you know, uh, zero reflect, you know, you should, you don't have really much to worry about. Um, so, that's the story on that gun. So, yeah, I wonder if it's real heavy. And I wonder, um, with it being, he if it is heavy, does it sway a lot? In the, uh, you know, does the, does the feline sway in the wind? Um, and do you have to, like, really anchor it down? Because I can imagine, man, something heavy like that, I get the whip in and could do some damage. Um, Glenn, you were right about Gary's audio. He's running an FT-101 down there. And, um... He's, he has distinctly set his audio up to sound like that, uh, for to be able to cut through the muck and to cut through the mire because he doesn't run a lot of power. And a couple of years ago, he was he had no amplifier, and he's running a 40-meter vertical on 80 meters with a loading coil at the bottom. You know, it's definitely not the most efficient, so he need, needed every every you know ounce of help he could get man and uh i remember working on it like freaking 25 watts from florida every single day just because of his audio not a great signal but his audio would cut through but now he's got an amplifier and a little more help man and he uh does a good job but um i would kind of wish gary was in here so he could explain his antenna and like what he had to go through and he's got he has um different ground radials across it's an elevated vertical and he's got different ground radials laid out across his roof some for 40 some for 80 he's got different loading coils for different bands and he does what he can do man and gets out and does a damn good job with that antenna i've worked him on 40 and here on am and a great signal both ways with that antenna and setup so uh two thumbs up gary if you're listening Real good, Glenn, on the multi-tool at the uh, at the yard sale, and that's a bummer. The man's going through a divorce. I don't want to ever go through another divorce again. Luckily, uh, my divorce was very easy. My wife and I, ex-wife and I, separated, and uh, we were separated for seven years, eight years before we got divorced. So it obviously, wasn't a priority. Okay, we didn't have many possessions between the two of us. A lot of the things were kept in my name or her name, and not split. So. The logistic, the logi there wasn't quite the logistical nightmare of some divorces. And uh, last comment, Jim, about the baseball. And if Casey didn't know, the Braves are going to the World Series to play the Astros. The Braves beat the uh, Dodgers last night. I'm not happy about that. I hate the Braves with passion because they're in the NL East with the Phillies. And I hate them, and I hate them, and I hate them. But uh, they're not going to beat the Astros. The Astros can just hit the ball way too good <laughs> they're just too much of an offensive force for Atlanta and their bullpen to do anything with them but very exciting baseball on the way glad you uh, enjoyed that game between the Astros and the Red Sox I watched most of it then I went to bed and woke up and saw they got blown out in the end so that's the story on that we'll keep it moving here good condition so far a little loud but that's okay everybody's got a great signal here man uh, all the way around Back up to you, Glenn. Uh, M1SNG. Just making sure I didn't have any other comments. W3MMR. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was listening, listening for the flying, <clears throat> the flying monkey there. Didn't hear. Must have fell asleep. <laughs> yeah. All right. That way, where the uh, it's a. Uh, it's a peaceful transaction, and uh, that's good for the, uh, the child too. You know. All right. Well, the uh, <coughs> the number twelve wire 
is um, okay, the way I have it hung is I have a 55 foot antenna support. So it does support the wire. Nothing else. And I've got the uh, uh, feed point at the top. It's just one of those Alpha Delta junction boxes. Because I use 9913 uh, coax. So anyway, that goes all the way to the top. It's screwed in. I've got it all waterproofed. And then I made my own strain reliefs. Uh, when I did, I took pieces of Delrin and I, uh, I drilled holes in them. So you, you put one piece of the wire in, go through the other side, go back up, kind of weave it in. And that keeps it tight. It's like a choker. And that works out pretty well. So there's no metal in between uh, uh, that there and the connection to the uh, junction box, the feed point, whatever you want to call it. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it goes down, the, the 160 goes out 100 feet on either side, sloping downward, sloping inward. And the, uh, uh, before it takes a sharp right angle turn in, it's uh, hung up in the tree about maybe 20 feet, 25 feet on both sides. And I have pulleys over there. And I, uh, I of course, see, I, you know, those are trees. I got one metal antenna support, but uh, they're all connected to, uh, I bought these pulleys over at Home Depot. They're, I think they're white nylon or something. Uh, they're all plastic. They've been up there 20 years. And, uh, you know, I did some inspections a while back, and they looked in pretty good shape. But uh, next year, I'm going to do a whole total uh, uh, replacement with the uh, hardware. So anyway, those, uh, <coughs> the length of line that pulls uh, that pulley in, Next to a tree, get my bolt down there. What I use is these double springs. So you ever see these springs that are on uh, uh, you know, doors? It's like a spring with inside a spring. Well, I use those um, where, where the down hall is, and I have got, I've got those on. Uh, you see, I have four of those on the 160. And they seem to work out pretty well. As the tree grows, as the tree sways in the wind, uh, of course there's plenty of, um, you know, sag in the antenna. And every once in a while I go around and I check all the lines. I pull down on the lines and just see what the antenna is. And everything seems to be uh, uh, holding together. Except I, <laughs> I hadn't been out there in a while. And a lot of the eye bolts were bent because of the tree, I guess the tree growing, whatever. But, um, you know, it's just experimentation um, as far as the hardware, the rigging, and, um, you know, kind of making it uh, so if, if a lot of weight does fall on it, it's probably going to have trouble going through. I had a, uh, I had a limb fall on it, so that's, I'd say about 30, 40 pounds, and it was just hanging on the wire. I mean, just hanging there. You know, I had to drop the antenna wire to get it off. So it, it took the impact, the shock, whatever, from that. But uh, the main support, the 55-foot support, it, it, it's on a hinge plate in the ground on a concrete foundation, and that just tilts over. I have an electric winch for that. That just tilts right over if I have to service it. And on the far corner of the house where the other support is, that also on a, on a hinge plate. It's uh, steel. It's part of a steel mass. It looks like a, uh, a flagpole, but it's all steel. But the, uh, yeah, having some sort of a uh, uh, sway shock suppression device in there to pull it tight and tie it up, no, I didn't like that idea. So I leave a little slack, put those springs in there, and, uh, you know, they compensate for, you know, some of the sway and growth of the, uh, the trees, uh, that's for sure. But, you know, you can take guys like Gary um, that are 
uh, you know, somewhat limited to space. Uh, he's come up with his own design. As part of the hobby, I think, you know, you're, you make the best of what you got and uh, utilize as much real estate as you can. And they come up with a plan. Use all the uh, all your knowledge, all your uh, you know, your training as a licensed hand to get the best uh, uh, configuration. You know, I think he's done that. He explained to me once uh, what he had done down there, and I said, "Wow, that's you know, <laughs> it's a lot of uh, uh, you know, a lot of thought process going on there." tryouts and, and all that there. But he, he makes it up there. He makes the trip into New England. Uh, that's for sure. And uh, Jim, yeah, the, uh, <clears throat> in the shack here, I have an R390A, which is Battleship Ray. I have a uh, Hamelin uh, HQ-110C. In the other room, I have an ART-13 with an SP-600 Hamelin. So yeah, a lot, of, a lot of Battleship Ray colors in the shack here. And uh, seems to work out pretty good for my needs. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to see if Charlie's with us. Um, kind of hogging the frequency here. Uh, N1XCW. N1SF. You there, Charlie? You there, Charlie? Yeah, Charlie, this is Charlie Bell. Charlie Bell. Yeah, Charlie. He, uh, you know, he gets, he, he's like me. He just starts wandering. Yeah, he's probably out feeding the rabbits and the raccoons and skunks and woodchucks and chipmunks. And <laughs> Maybe something big I got a hold of. Hold on, was that you, Charlie? Yeah, I, I can't even hear who you're talking to over here. I told you I was just going to stand by and listen. It's, uh, it's too difficult this morning. There's only a couple of you that I can't even hear. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear you say you're gonna stand by my B dog, my B big dog. All right, man. We'll catch you next time, Charlie. Always good hearing you, dude. And um, it is a little rough here this morning. So down to you, Jim. KM4XG with a big signal, Jim. As always, W3MMR. I lost the band, Glenn. I think he turned his amplifier off. Uh, I don't know if he's doing a test or something there, but uh, he's in there. Yeah, I don't... I think he stopped transmitting. Yeah, I don't know what happened there, uh, Jim. Glenn said he might have been testing something. I, I can't hear you now, unfortunately. Oh, I was like scrambling to find a web SCR because I thought that maybe the band went away. Uh, but hold on, let me make sure I got it. Yeah, Barry, the band changed because Jim came way up and signal equal to you when you couldn't hear him. Wow. How about that? That's weird because, like, Glenn and Jim, you guys are like the same amount of distance away from me. Not that big of a difference. That is funky. Anyway, how about that? Well, I'll make. I'll keep it short here, and then I'll. Um, because I know the Florida AM net likes to get on at 6:30 for their pre-net, and we've been on here blabbing for a while, and things are kind of dwindling down here. So, kind of make this my final, I guess. I don't have much to comment on, really. Um, just wanted to mention about the ends of your antenna. You call them down haul, down haulers. I think it's what you called that section of the antenna. I guess where it goes through, so where a pulley or it'll go over a branch, come straight down a rope. Um, I have big heavy duty bungee cords on either side of my antenna. Um, the one side goes I have a 10 foot piece of exhaust pipe that I mortared in the ground on the one literally on the tippy corner of my property right by the sidewalk I have a, uh, a Harkin block pulley at the top of that and then rope goes obviously through that and then I have staked in the ground and hooked to the stake it is a real heavy duty bungee cord 
and um, you know just to keep a little bit of tension on the uh, on the antenna and I did the same thing on the other side but uh, the other side the rope goes over a branch and is up about three times as high it's about and is about 25 feet in the air over the rope or over the branch back down to uh, the same thing to another bungee cord that's uh, staked in the ground what I used was I actually used those, you know those dog runners things like you can put your dog in the middle of the yard hook a leash to it them corkscrew cheap silver corkscrew things with the with the hook on it with the loop on it well, I used one of those cause so it could swivel I, I don't know why I thought that maybe the antenna would be swiveling around but I thought since I had a swivel on there and if like the rope needed to twist and the bungee cord needed to rotate I thought that that would be a good idea so I used those on either side of the antenna to, to hold the bungee cords but I know a lot of people have different takes on that I know Rob in 1ALF has uh, is using garage door springs uh, inside a like a big inside a uh, I don't know if it's PVC or metal but they're inside a pipe and a thing you can see like slide like with a with a weight on it and the thing like slides up and down you know with the weight and all that stuff it's pretty intricate um, but since I put this this antenna up with the ladder line and everything or with the feed open wire feed line I had to do something with the with the springs or bungee cords because I kept think the rope kept breaking the branches kept breaking and ever since I did that I mean it really takes up like you said Glenn of sways in the wind takes up a lot of the slack and I haven't really had any issues except for a squirrel chewing through my the rope the center support rope one time so anyway we'll keep it moving I'll send it back to um back up to you Glenn then I'm gonna take a standby for a bit man I gotta run down the hall and maybe I'll um See what's going on on 160 if anybody's down there, but I'm sure it's going to be as loud as louder than hell down there, I would imagine. So, anyway, look, I'm going to bid a bit of do, boys. Say 7 3 for now. Listen out for a bit. We'll be around. I'm trying to figure out some other stuff to do. Figure out what time I got to go to dad's house and all that fun stuff. So, Charlie, Gary, Jimbo, the rest of the crew. Great hearing you, boys, as always. Send it up to you, Glenn, and we'll be listening out. M1SNG in the fine group, W3MMR. Yeah, okay, very, very good. Yeah, yeah everybody has a version of their, uh, you know, state depression and, uh, you know, shock absorption. Uh, you know, have something that gives a little bit there. That sounds like you've got it there with the, uh, the bungee cords and all that. I, uh, I just bought uh, a 500-foot roll of 316 uh, Dacron rope. I've been looking for this stuff, and uh, HRO had it. Um, it's it's got a uh, outer jacket on it, and I've had that up there for 20 years, and it's still in good shape. But I just when I do the maintenance, I'm just gonna uh, you know kind of uh, uh, you know re recondition the whole uh, uh, support system up there. But uh, yeah, it's better to have a, a little bit of give in there. Garage door springs, yeah, that must be uh, uh, a quite a, a setup there. Very, very interesting on that. And, uh, you know what I did? I was trying to figure out how to get away with, uh, uh, you know, lengthening the antennas. You know, I wanted to make the, uh, the, the you know, 75, 80, whatever, at uh, 30, 85. So, uh, you know, I'm out there. I got the MFJ meter and, you know, cutting and soldering the end and all this back and forth. And so I ended up getting these. It's a, it's a double cable clamp. So uh, what you do is uh, the, the clamp opens up, put one leg of the wire in, then you loop it around the insulator, and then go back into the other side of the clamp and just tighten them up. You used to see them on a lot of outboard motor uh, boats, uh, the steering systems. Uh, home, in fact, Home Depot sells them. And uh, I was able to do that. If I needed to shorten it, I would just choke up on it a little bit or let it out. And uh, you know, it, worked. it seems to work pretty good. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's nice to hear everybody's, uh, uh, you know, version of uh, how they set up their antennas and, and all that. But, uh, yeah, I know with limited space, it's even uh, a bigger challenge. Perry, uh, great ch talking with you this morning. And uh, Charlie, if you're still listening, and uh, uh, KN4XG, I guess he uh, he uh, faded out there for a bit, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but I'm going to walk away a bit, grab a cup of coffee, I'll come back down here and just... Uh, Probably listen and finish the coffee, 
and uh, I, gotta, I make a list here of all the things that I have to do, so, uh, and there's no hurry on that, just the, uh, the to-do list, as you call it. So anyway, uh, we'll say seven threes. Again, it's a pleasure uh, chatting with you, maybe catch up with you a little later on, Terry. Uh, W3MMR, N1SNG, uh, we'll be clear. Hi, brother. It's always great to hear you, Glenn. Always got a great signal, man. It's always a pleasure. 73 W3 MMR standing by. See you, Jim. If you're out there, if you can hear me in the distance, Jim, Jim, Jim. Hey Jim, wow, what a what a change, what a change. Seven three W three MMR. It's that it's that hour just before sunrise, and you know, the band goes long, long, and then it shortens up. And uh, when Terry said he couldn't hear you anymore, you came right up to twenty over nine for a few seconds. Three, four. 